regardless. All right. Kalos Pokemon League. Here we go. Sinji versus John Numbers. And there is no better setting I could feel for these two players. It's a large stage. The platform gives a lot of variety to how these players can zone each other out, how they can camp, how they can return to the stage if they end off, off of it. And it's rather big in the grand scheme of things. Uh, as far as competitively viable stages go, uh, Kalos is one of the few that is notably larger than Battlefield. You know, assuming you're using Battlefield as like a point of reference. And you also got those platforms to play with, man. They're kind of chilling off the edge. So it kind of extends it even further, you know? Yo, what is this song? It's a jammer. Good foot still coming out from John. Goes for the trampoline to finish him off. That was all according to plan for John. I feel like this is the quickest stock you'll get a chance to see in this set. Uh, for those of you who aren't used to the old days, this is this is a set that's, that tends to go on a bit longer. It's just like they, they know how to respond to each other's tools. Yep. Actually, I feel like on that note, Sinji might find himself at a slight disadvantage only on the fact that John is so acclimated to fighting Sinji's Pac-Man. He's done so countless times. The thing is, this is a new Pac-Man. That's something you gotta remember about. So he's got, Sinji's got some, definitely got some new tricks to bust out on the table, but John's playing a completely different character, trying to play this Rushdown-esque character, which I might not be used to. Also, it definitely doesn't has to be way more wary of grab, for instance, because grab is actually like a functioning move in this game. Yeah, it's not a meme. It's not great, but it's not a meme. Yeah. And that was a great trap coming out from Sinji. He actually placed the bell on the platform to force John to be able to have to like either dash forward or roll, make it, a, a, you know, go for a commitment besides jump, because he would have got caught by the bell. And Sinji knew exactly what was going to happen. Point blank bell into a forward smash. Inky coming through. Now a matter of seeing what happens for us. It's just like, that's just with Sinji tying things up. And still two minutes cooked down on the timer. It's... I don't know. It, I feel, me personally, what I'm going to find the most interesting out of this is not who's going to maintain stage control because ultimately I feel like that's going to in Sinji's favor and it's just going to be John zone breaking a lot. But, like, how do they get their damage out? Sinji's still trying to figure out, like, what are the combos I can go for? Like, what, that was one of the most well known things about his Pac Man in Smash 4 was, you know, how is he going to get his combos? How flashy is he going to be? How effective is it going to be? Flashy or not, he's going to try to have to get this victory. Now we got numbers. At this point, Numbers could easily go for a, uh, a, a roller, a splat roller to try to ground Pac-Man and try you know, follow up with that O-Smash. Because there's one thing that Inkling struggles with, if you can't get the roller, then they can't like actually get their kill because they, a lot of their moves are really hard to land, like smash attack wise. That was out of this world. Using the roller as an active hitbox to get rid of the Hydra and then carried it forward to catch Sinji completely off guard. I actually brought up a really good point with Inkling in that Inkling yeah. doesn't struggle to get damage in the slightest. No. Like, no. John is definitely going to be the aggressor in this relationship, but when it comes to the kills, outside of Roller, like, securing a smash attack, John only really has up there to up there to rely on. But the thing is, like, John's ink is super low. So, like, that's why you see Sinji trying to play super aggressive. He doesn't want him to try to get that charge or anything. He doesn't have enough for a splat grenade, for instance. He could be insanely useful in this match if he tried to, like, deflect the projectiles. Use that as a way to try to chase down Sinji, just to, like, use that as, like, cover for himself. Four smash, not enough to get that hydrant. We're learning just as he is. Good call out from numbers. Spacing away from that dash attack. Super jump gonna get knocked away by that hydrant. Really smart call from Sinji. Even if it's not going to get a you know a quick kill, it's just going to keep on building up the damage. It's something that I think he's going to have to do, and that's not going to kill from out deep. Yeah, he had that key ready to go. Key is a very fast projectile. It's going to have some huge knockback. Number sees it coming, opting to recover low instead. Looking for that other. <laughs> Both of them are just hunting for their kills now, but it's going to be Sinji who manages it out. Yeah, John ended up going for that jump out of shield and getting caught by it. Comes back in with a back here, but great directional influence coming out from Sinji. Try to say uh, shuffle, <laughs> uh, directional shuffle, whatever the heck it's called. There we go, back air catches him out of the jump. Now, One stock apiece. Yeah, these boys are sitting on their uh, their last two and a half minutes on the clock. It's gonna be fun. I don't think either of them are gonna go for the uh, the timeout, but it's an option on the table. John playing a more aggro character than we've previously seen, and Sinji, I think, acclimating very well to the movement mechanic changes for um, for Pac-Man and playing him a bit more aggro. He was always known as a bit more of an aggressive Pac-Man compared to others, but now I think the game around him changed for the better. 
Right, he's getting back onto the stage. Wants to jump over the hydrant just to like, you know, try, try to like bait out when the water's gonna come out or not. So it was for the overhead swing of the splat grenade. At this point, Sinji's playing a great keep away game, and like you said, the timer is starting to tick little by little. You know, with the Inkling's movement options, my like, Inkling shouldn't have too much of an issue to get in onto Pac-Man. I think it's just, Sinji's had really smart placement of his trampoline and of his, uh, more importantly, the high train. He puts it at such a distance where, like, John has to respond to it. Whether he's jumping over it, he's getting rid of it on his own rights, he's sitting there and defending. He's not close enough to just completely go bypass and then go to the platform that Sinji's at. Great parry coming from Sinji. Get back down on the stage, safe and sound. I mean, it's very broadcast itself. Gets caught by the bell with a forward smash coming out. It looks like Sinji's Pac-Man might be the, uh, the, d the day one uh, winner here, man. It is, he is pulling, pulling out all sorts of tricks that like no one's really prepared for. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the real deal. It's just that like, these are different types of tricks that, did they go to Battlefield Gower for Planes? Yeah. Okay. I mean, John numbers his counter pick. He's definitely gonna go to Gower Planes to play some uh, music, but, oh, I think someone has a controller turned on. All right, looks like they got it fixed. Moray Towers, there we go. This is the music that you don't really get to hear that much in this game because it's only on one stage. I love Splatoon's music. Some choices are a little suspect, but for the most part, it has a phenomenal soundtrack. Splat 1 and 2. They like they like create their own little language, right? The little they have, I, I like to call it the Woomy speak. <laughs> Not Woomy. It, it does have a, a name. I just forgot what it is. That and also Octarian has a uh, language. One, go. Either way, we're here on Battlefield Formation of Mario Towers. No, oh, this stage is lit at night, actually. Oh, the night version of Mario Towers is amazing. Just gonna put ink on him. Yeah, ink is such a... It's such a cool mechanic. Not only are you, like, you're nailing down more damage, but, like, you have to be careful of how to utilize it. It's very much from the game that it calls on. However, with Splat... The Splat Roller, I feel, gets, like, hurt the most when you don't have any. Now, listen, man, I know there's a match going on, but I cannot stop watching those cats in the background. Oh, Judd and Judd yeah, Jr. Judd and Judd are Jr., man. slaying right now. They're, they're just having the time of their life. They're just loving this, like, inkling fight off against a Bandai Namco character. They're like, yeah, that squid looks fat. Yeah. Where is its tentacles? Oh. For the forward air, Sinji's already at 100%. Numbers are starting to adapt here. They put that splat bomb, forcing Sinji to go for, like, a normal getup, a little slightly delayed. This is a... Pretty comfortable change of pace. Being as Battlefield is uh, is no longer like a large stage, you it's know what? a lot more acclimated for being able to cover space that well. And see John putting oh that to use already. God, that was such a great punish. You know, you just saw the grab coming out, ran right back into him because you know he really does have a great gra uh, punish game. Being a, she's a very fast character, you know. Yeah. Okay, so he's gonna chill back, try to throw those projectiles. You have to respect the grab this time around. Okay, numbers. Trying to mix up how he's gonna get back on the stage, sitting at 101%. So that's a fun fact. I, I haven't seen John do this yet, but I know that it can be used to some effect. Uh, Inkling can go from the underside of Battlefield from one side to the other very effectively mm -hmm. without using a lot of ink and without having to wait too long. And numbers was just chilling there for so long that the key was able to come out and nail that kill right, right in the nick of time. It's a bit of a slow burn, but that's just sort of how it gets it has to get played out. Mm. I think Sinji's responded to the counter pick incredibly well, though. He's been almost glued to center stage battlefield, and I'm pretty sure that's how you're going to want to play this stage, especially with a character like Pac-Man, because it's like, lock down your defenses, use the platforms defensively the best you can, and just keep your opponent away. Just defend the castle as best as you can. It's And Sinji is absolutely no stranger to that style of play. Oh, here we go. Again, throwing that splat bomb onto the fire hydrant just to push it off slightly. Good catch on that bell. You, know, you saw him going for that forward air. Able to catch the hydrant. He's going to be able to push him off. Sitting at 108% off stage. Where is he going to land? Sinji's not going to let him uh, go for that top platform. Like, this entire match, in my opinion, is just them centered around the fire hydrant, right? They're playing around it. It just seems to be like the, the focal point that they just have to like... Wait for it to come out, and then just go for the follow-up afterwards. It's 
why, con contrary to previous iteration of Pac-Man and Smash 4, like, Fire Hydrant wasn't that potent of a uh, piece of material. Because stages were just a bit larger, and especially on Battlefield, where it was just a larger stage in general, Fire Hydrant didn't lend itself too well to covering space, but look at it in re relation to everything going on. Fire Hydrant's pretty big. The stage, it's fairly normal, but it's covering so much space, it's giving Sinji such a good opportunity to funnel the options that his opponents have. Although, let's not count out John yet. He's doing a phenomenal job of surviving. Inkling's chilling at 205%. Trying to run up the I would say, say that. I mean, he got the throw, and he was put in that prime position to roll against the edge of the stage, get that grab, back him into the blast zone, and that's all she wrote. Up throw, trying to get the follow-ups afterwards with the up airs. Yeah, there's, generally speaking, there's not as many uh, combos off of throw, or at least it's not nearly as combo-oriented as some players may be used to. Some characters still do. Some characters can move out of their uh, throws, but Pac-Man does not seem to be one of them, at least not yet. Give Sinji time to cook with this character, though. You know, this Galaxian ship, the double hit, following up with a forward air. The brutal forward throw, man. He like he puts you, he puts your face to the that gun, dude. The barrel of the gun. And it's like, yeah, it's just ink, but it's like, it's, it's brutal. right there. It's brutal. They're trying to go for that forward smash on the hydrant. Still gets a punish from Sinji. Things are looking pretty bleak for John. It's rough in these streets of Inkopolis. That was a great trap. He was trying to bait out the ledge jump to avoid that uh, hydrant or the bell coming oh, out. Oh no. Oh, gee, I think he went to go for a short hop or something because like that was a little bit too slow with the back air punish. And that key, not enough to get the kill just yet, but he still has to take away two stocks. This is looking like Sinji going to yeah. grand finals. Free trip down there, Pac-Man. Yo, is Pac-Man on its way to winning the first Zeno? Actually, I've got a question. Uh, Devin, since this is a different Smash game, does that mean that we have a new set of champions? I'm not sure. I cause I've thought about that too. Like, does the champion lineage like continue? Yeah, or it's, it's, I think it's start fresh. They've won Xenos. I don't they know. won Xenos, and the Xeno series is still counting upwards, but What's we haven't we have yeah, it's a new game. We haven't had a Smash Ultimate. There's no yeah, ultimate champions. I might, I yeah, might take need, first champion. We need maybe. a new champion 